This video will walk through how to plot the diagnostic plots with the chicken and lysine data. What you're looking at here is the R script lysine.r. Now I'm going to run through a lot of this code because you've already seen it in the previous video. That is, this is the code in the first few lines about calculating the simple linear regression. And so we do things like calculate the correlation coefficient, we run the simple linear regression, and then we look at some of the output. So I'm going to run all of that now. And you should be able to refer to the previous video to see how, what we do and to learn about the output in that video. So I'm going to highlight those codes and write and click run. Now the next thing uh, we're going to be looking at functions uh, in this diag plot function, uh, and so the code here will allow you to test a number of assumptions for the linear regression you made. And these are, this function provides all the code to run all of these diagnostic plots that we learned about in the lecture. And so it's really important to understand how to make these graphs and how to interpret the output. And so ideally, um, we can do all this with this diag plot function. And so it's a function, just like you might remember in class, we calculated a function. We did one to calculate uh, means and standard deviations. We did one for the birthday problem. Um, all the functions start with the word function and then an open curly bracket. And then inside the curly brackets is all of the meat uh, that goes into the function. And so this is actually a pretty long function because it uses ggplot to create these plots based on any data that you provide it. And so you don't necessarily need to know exactly what's going on within the function. What you need to know is how to apply the function to produce the plots that we'll look at in this class. And so I'm going to highlight everything in this function. Uh, and all it does, you can see the areas in green here, it's saying what kind of plot it's making. And so all you have to do is run the function, highlight it all, click run, uh, and it will save that function. And so now we can see that you can see and you can run the diag plot function to your model output any model output that's saved in an R object by using p.diag uh, and then assigning that to the diag plot function. And then in this case, my.model is any R object that you get when you run LM or when you get when you run a simple linear regression or a linear model standing for LM in R. And so the important thing here is you can print the analysis of the residual plot by using p.diag dollar sign p.res. Now p.res is the plot for the residuals uh, in this case. And so this is helpful to know. And so the first thing is we're going to assign this p.diag uh, diag plot is the function. And then slr was the output. Remember, we ran this regression on the chicken weights and the lysine um, amount ingested. And we call that output. We save that in R as slr. And you can see I can look at that up here in my environment if I wanted to. And so we'll highlight this and click run. And nothing happens. All we're saying is that, oh, by the way, call p.diag, use the diag plot function on my regression output, and then save that so I can look at the, at the graphs. And so as an example, we'll look at the residuals. So p.diag dollar sign p.res will plot the residuals. And so when I run that, I get a great looking residual plot. So on the x-axis are all the fitted values. So these are all of the estimated values, or you can think about them as the y hat values for all of the estimates of the amount of weight that chickens gain after ingesting so much lysine. And so we have the residual values along the y-axis. And so ideally we'd see a random pattern with no trends here in the data. Now here, it looks pretty good. This blue line is a smooth line that goes through all of the data. Uh, the red line just shows you where zero is. So we would expect if it's a random pattern to see about half the data points below zero and about half above zero, which is just about what we're seeing here. What you might notice is at this point here, this one with the residual greater than two seems to be uh, kind of pushing this blue line up. Uh, and so we might be concerned with this data point. What's going on there? Uh, that might be uh, uh, having us see this this bump uh, here in the data set. And so that's the residual plot. We can also look at the standardized residuals. 
And so again, p.diag dollar sign p.std res will give you the standardized residuals. So here's the output from that. Now all we're doing, it's basically the same data we looked at. We're just standardizing the residuals. And so we're seeing basically the same trends. Again, you can see this fitted value, this point where we have about 18 uh, grams, the residual tends to be quite a bit higher than all the others. Uh, and so ideally we're looking for between two and negative two in the standardized residuals, anything outside that we're concerned about. And this turns out to be that same data point that was giving us a problem in the residual plot. Another way to look at it, and this is gonna look uh, kind of similar uh, to the other graphs, but we could take the square root of the standardized residuals. So let's see what that graph looks like. This is p.sqrt res. And so we see something like this. Same thing, fitted value on the x-axis. The square root of the standardized residuals on the y-axis. And then you can see the trend here. Again, this data point uh, up around 18 uh, grams uh, seems to be far and away away from most of the other data points. But you can see the trend here too, uh, as given in the blue line. The next one is a QQ plot. Uh, we've looked a lot at the QQ plot in this class, but let's see what it looks like for the chicken and lysine data. Well, here again, remember with the QQ plot, we're looking for a straight line that goes from the bottom left to the upper right. And we sort of have that relationship here. Um, what we're plotting is the theoretical quantiles on the x-axis and the standardized residuals on the y-axis. And you can see that we've kind of mostly have a general straight line uh, here that we that is represented by the QQ plot. The next thing is the Cook's distance. Uh, I really like the Cook's distance because it can identify influential observations. Uh, and so let's see what this graph looks like. Here's the Cook's distance graph. You can see it looks like a bar plot. Now, as it turns out, every data point in your data set gets a measure of Cook's distance. What we see along the x-axis is the observation number. And so if we were to open up the chicken data set, we would be able to look up how influential each data point is to the results. And so here, all we would need to look at is look at the first row. Uh, and as it turns out, this one has the most influence. So we can look at the first row or the first observation in the chicken data set and see what's going on there. It's got a lot of influence on the regression. Uh, and so we could see possibly what's going on. We also might look at the fifth observation. And so that one is uh, denoted as number five. So we look at the fifth row in the chicken data set. That one also ranks quite high in its distance uh, in its Cook's distance. And so we might be interested in looking at that too. And the other ones are uh, have smaller Cook's distances in, indicating that they're less influential to the regression. And so here it is. Here's a simple, this p.diag function can produce all of these diagnostic plots using ggplot um, for any regression you use. And so it's really handy. It'll be handy for this class and uh, probably handy for you after you are done with this class. And so I hope that you find it useful. And we'll talk more about regression as we work through the rest of the modules.